Fatima says, is it obligatory to pray the Eid prayer even for women? In the subcontinent, there is no arrangement for ladies, so mostly women pray Eid prayer at home. Is this permissible? <clears throat> Fatima, we've stated that it is highly recommended for women to attend Eid prayer. And this is known from the hadith of Umm Atiyah, may Allah be pleased with her, where she said that the Prophet ﷺ used to order women to come and go and attend the sermon of Eid. And we were instructed to order all women, including girls who are in their menses. Yet, they were prevented from attending the prayer with the congregation of women, and they were asked to stay behind, but they were ordered to attend the congregation in the sense that being present with them, so that when the Prophet makes dua, and all the Muslims make dua, they share this dua of goodness. So from this hadith, some scholars said that if a girl or a woman in her menses is exempted from prayer, yet the Prophet orders them to go and attend the Eid prayer, this means that it is mandatory. But the most authentic opinion is that it is highly recommended for women and that it is not mandatory. Now, in the subcontinent, they don't have any arrangement for ladies uh, in the masjids. This is wrong. And this is part of them, unfortunately, not following the sunnah. So many wrong practices in the subcontinent. People there, in majority, do not follow the Quran and the sunnah. They'd rather follow their peers their scholars, their leaders, who themselves may not have sufficient knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, but they follow what they had learned from their ancestors, from their forefathers. So their religion, their conviction is based on imitation, not on conviction and belief. And this is very dangerous. On the Day of Judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal would not ask you about the Aqeedah or about the belief or what so-and-so scholar or leader or peer used to follow. Allah Azza wa Jal would ask you as an individual, what was your response to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal would call them out on the Day of Judgment and ask them, what have you responded and answered the Prophets? So you cannot say, well, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal said so-and-so, Imam Shafi'i so said so-and-so, Abu Hanifa said so-and-so. If you are presented with the verse from the Qur'an, and you can read that, it's in black and white. Or you're presented with an authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Tirmidhi, in Nasa'i, yet you reject it and say, no, 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 I follow my madhab. Akhi, if you are a layman, and can differentiate between a verse and a hadith, yes, you go ahead and follow your madhab. But if you're an intellectual person, an edu educated person, you can do your own research, and you are assisted to do so by a scholar or a student of knowledge who has no hidden agenda rather than to show you the right path, then this is definitely unacceptable. So we would urge and call the people and the Muslims all over the world, especially in the subcontinent, where they have strong conviction and belief. They love Allah Azza wa Jal. The Muslims in India, in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, I am so astonished with their commitment to Islam, with their love for this deen. I see them in my masjids here in, in, in the local areas when they come out of the masjid and they see someone begging. Never you, ever you would find anyone passing by without putting a rial or something similar to that in the hand of this beggar. Though he is a beggar, we know most likely he's a professional beggar, but out of their love and compassion they do this. How they observe the sunnah prayers that is almost similar to fard. And this is one of the wrong misconceptions, but it's still 
we praise them for that for it when people come and say uh sheikh we pray 17 rak'ahs for isha i said wow this is a lot isha is only four rak'ahs yes said that we pray this before and this after and then the shafa and the water and and they put a lot of prayers into one but they pray it religiously they are committed to it so there are so many things that are good about them but when you don't have commitment to Quran and Sunnah, when you don't have full adherence to the Quran and Sunnah, this is when shaitan comes and he distorts Islam. He manipulates people, unfortunately. And this is why the vast majority there are warned of Ahl al-Hadith, of the Salafiyyah, of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They say, don't follow these. They hate the Prophet they hate the madhabs and the school of thoughts and the maslaks. All of this is blatant lies. None of it is correct. But this is pulling the carpet from underneath their feet. The, their scholars and their peers and their leaders who are making money out of the masses. When they see that their congregation are following the Quran and the Sunnah, this means that they're going to get away from their grip and their control. And this is something they don't want or like. And this is why they warn and they tarnish the reputation of those who follow the Quran and Sunnah. And this is wrong. So coming back to your question, women must have a space in the masjids, all masjids, for them to pray. Because the Prophet himself said, والسلام, do not prevent women from atten attending the prayers in the masjids. He's addressing men. Do not prevent women from attending prayers in the masjid. However, he added, والسلام, praying home is best for them. So he gave them the choice. You as men do not have the right to prevent them or to say, no, we want the best for them. No, you have to allocate a place in the masjid. And if they want to come, this is their own Right. As for Eid prayer, praying it at home is an issue of dispute. The vast majority of schools of thought permit this. So they permit it in the Shafi'i, uh, uh, the Maliki, and the Hanbali school of thought. They all say that if a person, an individual, uh, skips or misses Eid prayer, then he can pray it alone at home. Uh, the Hanafi school of thought say that this is not permissible. And Sheikh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah also agree with that opinion of the Hanafi school of thought. And so does Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. And this is the most authentic opinion. That individuals may not pray uh, eight prayers alone. Either you pray it with the congregation, with the Muslims or you skip it and do not pray it and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.